as a way to extrude salt. Like the marine iguana, the flightless cormorant evolved from its original design and became a diver. Because it no longer flies, its wings are atrophied and useless. Its power has shifted from upper body to lower body. No other cormorant in the world is flightless, but no other cormorant has such large and strong legs and feet. Expedition scientists, while scuba diving, saw a flightless cormorant catching a fish at a depth of 60 feet. Cormorants have a courtship ritual that humans might find comical. The birds present each other with tokens of affection in the form of dried seaweed. The male frigate bird also has a unique approach to courtship, inflating its bright-colored throat sack and making a clacking sound to attract females. The blue-footed booby does a special mating dance called sky-pointing, supplemented by honks and whistles. Special mating behavior and colorful displays might be a way of helping creatures recognize and mate with others of their own species, a definition of species being a population that reproduces only within itself, preserving its distinct identity. This is Black Turtle Cove on the north coast of Santa Cruz Island. These sea turtles come into these protected waters to mate. The male green turtle is smaller than the female adult green turtle. It's advantageous for the female to be larger than the male because that way her buoyancy can support the male and keep them both above water. She could actually drown. This is Roca Redonda, one of the most dramatic seabird concentrations in the Galapagos. A hardcore bird watcher would just go nuts here, would really love it. All right. Thousands and thousands of seabirds. To share the view of the great Galapagos seabirds, the Discovery Expedition brought along its own airplane, packed in crates for assembly on deck. Called an ultralight, this is a small, open, two-seat flying machine powered by a snowmobile engine. These views are off limits to tourists, and of course they were unattainable for Darwin. They seem to fulfill every fantasy of fascinating lost islands in the Pacific, craters still fuming, scenes untouched by time, no sign of human presence. The Galapagos seems a perennial source of new things, said Darwin. Today's scientists would second that. They would also tell you that new things, not just new creatures and vegetation, but new bacteria, viruses, all forms of life, are not only evolving, but evolving in many cases much faster than Darwin thought. And it's happening everywhere. The difference between evolution in these islands and elsewhere is only that nature's creativity stands out more vividly against the pristine landscape of the Galapagos.
here it's been very, very rewarding. We've seen something new every dive, something new to us, something new to science, yet we will have to spend a lot of time verifying and confirming that what we saw has not been overlooked or misidentified or misinterpreted in the past in the literature. And I'm sure that much of what we do over time will be challenged and questioned, and that's all part of the process of science. Six months after it ended, John McCosker estimated that the expedition had discovered about two dozen new species, meaning that a discovery took place on almost every day of the diving. Two scorpionfish found by the expedition are not only new species, but belong to no known genus. A new genus will be created to demonstrate their evolutionary uniqueness. Classification of new species is a long process. It might take several years. Other important findings will be evaluated over even longer periods as the academic discipline of the lab follows up on the excitement and adventure of discovery. We think that this is probably a new species, one that's not been described before, and I'm certain that this is the only footage available of serrate octopuses in good condition like this. We don't know what species this is. We're not familiar with it. It might be unique to the Galapagos. It'll take a lot of work in the museum examining other specimens and comparing it to be sure of its identity. This is Colobodema, a beautiful little deep sea medusa that has some very special tricks up its sleeve. Its color pattern in white light is one of blue tentacles with white tips and a bluish tint to the swimming bell. Also, when white light shines through the muscle tissue that comprise the bell, the fibrous structure of the muscle tissues breaks up light into shimmering patterns of iridescence. This creature is a batfish. His pelvic fins are modified into fins which can walk, very large eyes to see his prey. And between his eyes is a little organ used to emit chemicals which attract small invertebrates to his mouth. Pelagithuri is, is completely unique among the sea cucumbers in that it never spends any time on the sea floor. This is the first time that anybody has had the opportunity to see what it feeds on and to be able to characterize its role in the deep sea community here. This is an extraordinary deep sea fish. Common name is the tubi. This is probably the first living specimen anybody has ever had in a position to be able to photograph. And while the fish people study their specimens in the future, Dr. Dirt will be sorting and studying 15,000 bones brought back from Barn Owl Cave. David Stedman excavated bones representing at least 12 species, nine of which are extinct on Floriana Island, and two of which were found for the first time. Meanwhile, further study of stratifications in Barn Owl Cave revealed prehistoric changes in climate with an impact on evolution. Galapagos is such a great place to study evolution, and evolution is really the key to life. Evolution adds time perspective to life. We can look at where we came from, where other organisms came from, and those same processes are going on. It gives us a peek at the future. In some cases, a really good look at the future. It's sort of ironic we're losing a lot of things right now when we're finally getting the tools necessary to study it in enough detail to understand it.